Hello, everybody, and welcome to Schwab Coaching. Our next topic is indicators and advanced charting techniques. I'm your host, Lee Bowl, so welcome, everybody. Uh, joined in the chat today by uh, James Boyd or JB. So say hello to JB, everybody. And here we go. That's exactly right. So before we can get to what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to ask you a question. Over the past six or seven weeks, I've showed you lots of different scans. Uh, and the question is, are you using them? Do you need an easier way to monitor a list? So we're going to talk all about that today. Uh, before we can do all that, though, uh, just a few logistical items. So we want to hear from you in the chat. Absolutely do that. And we have some written disclosures as well. So keep in mind that everything we are doing today should be considered as educational and informational in nature only. Nothing should be construed as a personalized trading recommendation. We use a lot of technical analysis because this is advanced charting, but Schwab certainly does not recommend the use of technical analysis as your sole method of investment research. If you are using our paper money software, uh, keep in mind that results in paper money don't always translate to real life trading due to changing market conditions. Also, for sake of simplicity in these examples, we will not take into consideration fees or commissions. And finally, investing does include loss of principal as one of the risks. So do keep that in mind. Okay. So first, let's just take a real quick look at the market. Down just a little bit today, but it is in this upward channel. Uh, also along the lower channel line, we have this orange line. That is the 20-day moving average. So we've been holding that pretty well. So you would just have to say that the uh, general trend is still up. So just put that in the back of your mind when you're trying to do your uh, market analysis. So the first thing I want to cover today is I've gotten a lot of requests um for something called the horner rule now if you're not familiar with that our one of our hosts on uh trader talk is kevin horner and he sometimes uses a filter for if you break through let's say a moving average okay um that is sometimes a a good signal right when something crosses from below to above uh, moving average. But sometimes you can go up there and then you can go right back down. So what Kevin found, at least, uh, is he uses a three-day rule, that three days over the uh, a moving average. So I've been asked, how do you do a scan for three days above any moving average? So we're going to do that first, but that is not the uh, main focus of today's discussion, but I want to do that first. So let's go to the scan tool. And let's see, we shall load a scan. And I'll show you how I built it. It is called three above a moving average. You can see I'm very clever with my names. Okay, so let's just see what the code is first. It's very simple. All right. So first we say, what length of the moving average are we looking for three closes above? And that's you can put that right in here, okay? So you, what you can do to make this for what you want is just open the code there and put in whatever moving average length you want. I put in 30 there for a second for this, okay? Then I simply define, let moving average be the simple moving average based on closing prices with the length that I put in there. And now, all right, let's go and see how you get the three days above. So all I said was, well, the close four days ago was below the moving average and the close uh, three days, right? Three days ago was above the moving average. The close two days above ago was a moving average and the close one day above the moving average. Now, you would think that that is correct, but we have to fix it, right? Because if you just did this, this is the first attempt, okay? 
So what we really need is we want it to be above, below the moving average four days ago, right? Because if you, if you just say the moving average here, what will happen is you could have a, a move above it, but the moving average is moving also. So you've got to sync the close above or below for where the moving average is that day. All right. So what we do here is we just say what we want. We just say we want. All right. So the close four days ago is below the moving average four days ago. And the close three days ago is above the moving average three days ago. And the close two days ago is above the moving average two days ago. And the close yesterday was above the moving average yesterday. All right. So that's all there is to it. Okay. So let us go ahead then and do that. And what do we have here? The NASDAQ 100. Let's just scan. So we're using a 30 day moving average, right? Okay. So let's go to a chart first. Put on a, um, a 30 day moving average because that's what I did it for. So we're going to remove all the studies and I'll add a 30 day moving average. And we'll make it 30 days. Oops. All right, we'll hit here. I got the 30 day on the chart. So let's just take a look at uh, what we got here. Uh, cadence design, let's see. Yeah, so that's what we got, right? This is three days above it. This one also happens to be breaking out as well. So let's go and take a look. We had the fourth day was underneath. The next three were above, and today is above as well. So that's how you do that scan. We can look at one more. Uh, we can look at uh, uh, Honeywell. Okay, we were below it four days ago, and now we're three days above. All right, so that is a little code for you. I will put that scan, uh, I'll put it in right now into the chat if you want it. Some people like it. Uh, so let me just go show you how to do it, how to open it, and uh, a few other things. So we'll go back to the scan tab, and I'm going to just uh, open this up here, and we will uh, share this scan query. And call it whatever you want. Again, if you want to be clever, you can call it three above. All right, share it. And then here it is. Remember, uh, scripts are not guaranteed for timing or accuracy. So what you do with that, keep in mind, is you don't click on it like a link. You go to the setup and you go to open shared item and you pop the URL in there. And you're going to have to do that several times here. Okay, now, here's what we need to do. I've given you scans on uh, breakouts, pullbacks. I've given you scans on consolidation. In other words, where something goes up and then is going sideways. After a good uprend, you're trying to do that with a breakout trade. I've given you... Um, also, ones for just ranges in general, all right? So what we need is a way to keep track of all that without doing a lot of work. So uh, I know James likes what I'm going to show you now. So we're going to go to the Market Watch tab. Okay. So the Market Watch tab if you're not familiar with it, is you can do a lot of things with this. All right. So what we're going to do is put in some columns that will alert us for all of those different types of conditions in one look. Okay. So I think James says you can use the market watch for uh, a dashboard or a one look. I'm going to call it a strategy center. 
Okay, it's going to be our strategy center. Okay, so what we're going to do first is I have to show you what you're going to need to do here. In order to, if you're new to my series, you should go to our page, our YouTube page. You should also subscribe to it if you're not. Hit the button to the lower right. Uh, then you want to go to our page, and then you want to find my series. So you go under playlists, and then you go over here to advanced charting. So all of the scans that we've gone over are in these not the ones that Ben did, although he's great as well, but the ones that I've done, you can see my little picture there, okay? So if you want to know more details, okay, about each of the scans that I've showed you, it's there. So we need to make the market watch into our strategy center, okay? How are we going to do that? All right, so we're going to go back to the market watch tab, and we are just going to add columns. Now, you have to do a little bit of coding for these columns. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to what I was showing you before, just so you know where to get this stuff. Oops, didn't want to do that. Okay, what we want to do is go to, let's see. Um, so here's one of my videos. And what you want to do is go to the archives of the, of the video, which is right here, the description, click more. And these are all the links for the scans that we've done. But I'm going to put in there after today, I'm going to give you all of these column scripts for setting up your strategy center. Okay, so this is where you're going to, I'm not going to put them all in, in the chat. Uh, there's too many of them. Okay, so just look here. It'll say columns for strategy center, and then you can just get the URLs that way. Okay, so what we're going to do first is you can customize this display. If we go all the way over to the right. It's, you would think they would make it, it's such a interesting little thing. We can click that that little gear and say, customize our columns here, okay? So this is when you load the scripts, they're gonna show up in here once you save them, all right? And I'm just gonna, I have some of them. So we're gonna do them one by one. So this script will give us a column, which will say if we're having uptrend consolidations. So we're gonna add that as an item, click okay. Okay, and we will go here and we have several, right? If it's if it's green, it means we have a hit. If it's red with a zero, that means we don't. So there's our first consolidation. Let's put all our scans in here, or at least most of them. So let's keep going. We're gonna build this strategy center, okay? All right, the next one is three above, whoops. So we'll add that one. And I'm going to show you how you can really customize this too with what your time frame is in a second. But we're going to add uh, three column above here. Oh, where I did that. Okay, so there's another one. Okay, and we need to make this a little smaller. Come here. All right, so we got two columns. All right, now let's do the next scan we're going to do is stocks that are in ranges, in case you like to do more neutral strategies. Okay, so we'll add that as a column. Get another one. Okay, and we have several more to go, okay? So let's go here. The next one we're gonna do is a moving average pullback, okay? And we will show you how to customize the moving averages and all these. So you can do quite a bit with the strategy center. All right, so we'll click okay there. We got another one.
Mm. All right, and let's add another one. We've got another one for flags. So add that in there. This one I got from Ken Rose. I didn't do this one, but I like it because it's a nice color. And let's see what else we got. And then we have one for, uh, we should have one for uptrend breakout as well. Okay, uptrend breakout. All right, so this is one that's going out, maybe has gone here, and then it'll take off, maybe. You never know for sure. So we'll add that as well, and that should about do it for us, I think. And we'll just move these columns over a little bit. All right, so now you have a strategy center. So what you can do with this, okay, um, is number one, you can get a feel for what's going on in the market. So we are doing, you can do this against any list you want, okay? The, the NASDAQ 100 in here, all right? And what what do we see? Do we see, are we rangy? Well, we got some in ranges. We have some in uptrend consolidations, moving average pullbacks. The market is going up. We have some of those though. So now we have the strategy center. We have to decide for some of these, what do you want? Okay, so for instance, here's what you do. Let's say I want the moving average pullback to be 50 to the 50 day moving average. Okay, so what we do is we just go to the columns and we find that column. Okay, so we call that column moving average pullback. We hit the little script icon. Okay. And this is the moving average length that we're looking for the pullback for. So we said 50 days. Let's do a 50-day pullback, a pullback to the 50-day moving average. Okay. All right. So now it's changed colors, obviously, because we were doing for a 20. So now we have some that are pulling back to the 50-day moving average. All right. So let us see if that's exactly true, number one. All right, so let's go to a chart and let's put on a 50 day moving average. This was a 30, I'll make it 50. Okay, so there's a 50 day moving average. And now if we go to our market watch tool, we see several stocks that are there. Let's take a look at, uh, uh, we got a couple, we've got, uh, And we have here, we have CD, W, Marriott. Oh, wait a minute, where's the movie? Okay, here we go, wrong column. All right, we have uh, CSX and Fortnite, okay? We want these, one of these three. So we'll just take a look at a couple of those. Let's take a look at Fortnite. All right, so let's go to a chart and take a look at Fortnite. There you go. All right, so there's a nice pullback to the 50-day moving average. Again, what was the low of the pullback? It was this day here. Have we had to have close above that high? We did yesterday. So this is in a hold to still pull back a little bit, but you're getting what you want. All right, so there we go. Let's take a look at another column and see what we're getting. All right, let's take a look at uh, trend consolidation. All right, so we have several here. Now, remember, this screen, okay, was for a stock that was going up and then doing maybe a little bit of rectangular consolidation. And what we do is we put uh, the traders using this technique, I should say, would put a buy stop above the top of the consolidation range for a continuation play. 
All right, so let's just take a look at a couple of, of these. We'll take a look at um, ROP, for example. All right, so that's exactly what we want, okay? So uh, the way a trader might do this one is put a buy stop limit above here and to see if you get taken into the trade. Now, we actually had a trade that was cooking. All right, so we got filled on this one. This was from a, a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, we ran this consolidation scan and we had a buy stop above here and we finally got filled. So if we go to our, so this is the type of trade that a trader using this particular technique would look for. So we got taken into the trade in the initial move up. If we go into the monitor, you know, we see we're up $25 already. We got into the, um, uh, the trade right when it happened. Okay, so that's how some people might use that column. All right. All right. Now let's look for uh, stocks just in general ranges in case you want to do, you know, strategies that maybe are more neutral or maybe you want to, you know, buy near the bottom of the range, sell near the top, sh short near the top of the range, buy near the bottom. There's all sorts of ways you can trade ranges. So let's just see. We'll sort to get the ones up here. So we have several in ranges. Uh, we've got, uh, let's take a look, we've got GFS here. We've got, uh, what else we got? Yeah, ANS. Let's look at those two. And right, let's look at ANSS. All right, so here's the stock in a range. So it depends on how you like to trade ranges, okay? Some traders might um, say we're at the top of the range. Last time we got up there, we got thrown right down. You know, here we have a little bit of a, of a doji in there, near there, showing a little indecision up there. So go ahead and, you know, some people might, do some sort of uh, bearish trade there. There's plenty you can do there. All right, let's see what else is in the strategy center that we can take a look at. We can we look at that GFS. That was another rangey. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, so this is at the bottom of this range, right? So there's different types of trades that you can can do on that. And again, let's go to Market Watch here. And now uh, we did a, um, let's do this. Did I do three above on here? Did I add three above? Yes, I did. So let's, let's change the moving average for three above. Okay. So again, what we want to do, we want three above a moving average. Okay. So again, how do we pick the moving average? You have to go into the code, but it's it's just one little number. You don't have to do any program or anything. So what you do is you go to the, the column, customize the column. We find column three above, column three above. We hit the little script icon, and this is the moving average that we are looking for a pullback, um, not a pullback, uh, three days above, right? So I set it for 100. Why 100? There's been some research that says uh, many traders like to buy stocks that finally break above their 100-day moving average. And it is a trend trading technique. It's just a longer-term moving average. But you want it to hold that. That's why we look for three days above there. All right. So we will do that. We'll leave it as 100. Let's see what we have for um, – I'm going to close this. But you could put in any moving average you wanted there. Okay. Um, so we have two. We have Honeywell and Mondelez. All right. So let's put a 100-day moving average on the chart. Okay. 
So I've got one here with the 20, 50, and the 100. So the 100-day moving average is this um, white line, okay, right there. So he said, uh, let's go back and look, short-term memory loss here. Uh, okay, Honeywell and Mondelez. All right. All right. Here was day four. We were below, and now we have three days above. Honeywell is currently in a symmetrical triangle. Um, some This is why some people like closes. Closes above some. Look how we broke it, but then we close below it, and now we're down. So I have drawn in here what a potential target might be if it did break out and hold. All right? It's just the width of the triangle projected up from the breakout price. All right, let's take a look at Mondelez. All right, again, the fourth day was underneath. The last three have been above. So that's what we want for this scan. Okay, uh, let me stop for a second before we go into another column just to check the questions. Um, okay, we had a question back on the S&P chart. The weekly RSI is around 78. Does that worry you? Okay, let's take a look. So we'll go take a look at the SPX. And the question was on the weekly chart. So let's put it into a weekly. And then we need the RSI. Oops, don't need that. Okay, yeah, it's at 78. So am I at all worried? It is overbought, but what you will find out if things are really running, you can stay overbought for quite a while. As a matter of fact, we're just getting stronger here. Uh, so, yes, it is overbought. When it's that overbought, it can still continue going up. But some traders know that the likelihood at some point is it's, you know, it can't do that forever at this. So it's going to pause and simply figure out how much you're willing to give back if that happens. All right. You know, maybe you use the trend line. If it breaks the trend line, you take some profits. Uh, maybe you use a moving average. So, yes, you are on alert, but you can see that you can stay overbought for a long time. As a matter of fact, the market can stay overbought longer than you have money if you're short. Put it that way. Okay. So, yes, it is something to keep an eye on. Uh, you could tighten your stops because of that, but it's not necessarily um, – a means to get out of the trade yet without a break of some support level. Uh, okay, let me just take a look in here. Talking about all the uh, events that we're having, that's good. Yeah, Ben is in Atlanta, I believe. Okay, I guess uh, that's about is it possible to have more than one market edge layer you can save and switch? Yeah, absolutely. All you do with that is, let's say you want to, um, you know, I know James has one, right? You just save whatever configuration is, save everything on your screen as a workspace, all right? So I could save this, save workspace as, you know, I could call it strategy center. I kind of like that. Should I put a little uh, copyright single there? Yeah, I won't do that. Okay. Right. So now you can go to your setup and then like I have all sorts of different workshops for my, for instance, for uh, my Wednesday class, market in the sector analysis, I've got, I've got this layout. Okay. And now we could go back to the strategy center layout. So that's how you can do that. Yes. Very good question. Okay. 
Um, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, good. Uh, perfect. All right. Let's continue. So the next, the next column we have, I got this from again, uh, Ken Rose. I have my own flags screens as well, but I would just show you that, you know, he, he did this column as well. And he's got little, I did it because it's got these little emojis I think are cute. So the down arrow is a bear flag and a, is a bull flag. All right. So uh, let's take a look at one of them here. We've got uh, uh, M-E-L-I. Let's see if that is a bear flag. Well, yes, it is. All right. So there's your bear flag. All right. So that's basically what I wanted to cover today is how to build yourself a a strategy center and how to, once you have these columns in here, again, you can go into the code, pick the moving average you want uh, a pullback to, you can pick the moving average you want three closes above, you can do flags, you can do breakouts. We didn't do breakouts, so let's add that in next. And that's this one here, column uptrend breakout. Let's see what we get today on that. We have CDW, Marriott. I believe uh, James talked about Marriott the other day too. Uh, let's take a look at Marriott. It looks like it's breaking out as is PayPal, as is CDW. So let's take a look at a couple of those. Yep. So there's Marriott. You might even consider this a flag it broke out of, right? You've got, you know, here we had one flag. And here we have another one. So, you know, we should do a trade. Uh, so this looks promising. Let's take a look at, uh, uh, at least for some traders, let's take a look at uh, CDW, which also made that. Yeah, that's another flag as well. All right. So these are both breakouts, okay? So let's do uh, CDW here. So we could just buy some and do it as a trend trade and see what's going on. So let's go here to uh, buy this. So we'll go right click, we'll buy custom just with a stop because it's a trend trade. We don't want to put in a target necessarily. All right. All right, so in this class we do somewhere, you know, five, ten thousand dollars, something like that. Uh, what's it? It's a two fifty five, so twenty shares would be what? Five grand. So we could do like thirty shares. Yes, you could put in the dollar amount, but I just kind of wing it. And we'll just link them together so the share prices are the same. Uh, we'll just get in on this one. Um, and then the stop, where would we put the stop? So let's uh, let's put this down here for a second and take a look. Depends on how much we want to give up. We could use the 20-day moving average, uh, or we could use what's the last kind of pullback low in here? I mean, it's this little candle here. So if we go under the 20-day moving average, we'd be under that as well. So we'd be risking like 20 bucks. Um, so let's do that. That would be about two, 224, 225. All right, so let's open that up again. 
it. Oh, I have to do it again. All right. Let's let's uh, get rid of this. We just want to buy a custom with a stop, not with a uh, OCO. All right. So we'll do 30 shares. Oops. All right. We got the little thing cooked there. Do this at the market. Stop was at 225. All right, we should make that good till canceled. And let's review the order. All right, so we're going to buy 30 shares of CDW. Okay. I'm on weekly charts, am I? Again? Okay. We can do that on a weekly chart. <laughs> it still looks good to me. Um, you want to go to the daily chart? Yeah, thanks. I keep doing that, actually. Let's go to the daily chart. Yeah, it's the same thing. 225 would be down here. If we wanted to do it a little bit closer on the daily chart. Um, you know, but it looks like we already placed that other trade. So we're in there. We could raise this up a little bit. Put it under here. All right. So we'll be replacing this. And we're going to write it to 232 based on the daily chart. Again, that's the activation price. We don't know if we'll get that when it triggers. Uh, we'll get a next available trade. So send that. All right. So there we go. Uh, let's take a look at um, the other one. Well, actually, let's look at our portfolio first. Okay. So uh, as I said, we did this one based on the consolidation breaking out. CLF. So let's just check that one out, see where our stops are. Yeah, so we have a stop under the big candle as it broke out. So uh, that looks okay. CEG, we're up quite a bit on this one. Let's take a look at that one. And also, if you are, um, one other thing is, Get in the habit of this, you know, if you've been doing a lot of trading, why did we buy CEG, you know, to begin with? So you can go to the tools and you can go to think log and you can put in the symbol if you've been taking notes on your trades. And we bought this because it was based on uh, the webcast we did about volume evaluation, not the one last week, but several ways back. And the 10 was above the 20. So we had a volume pattern break and we had the 10 day moving average above the 20. That's why we bought it. OK. All right. So now let's go look at the chart. Yes, yeah, certainly it looks like we might be able to uh, raise the stop on this one. Uh, where might we do that? Well, we could look at the last significant pullback low, which was in here. Uh, that would certainly give us a potential to uh, maybe get some more, lock in some more gains. You never know for sure, though, because you can have gaps and all of that. But um, so what we're going to do is we're going to place that current stop and we're going to put the new one at 156.69. Uh, again, that is the activation price. No chance, uh, you know, we may get that, we may not. All right, let's go look at our other one. And the other one we did was uh, Bank America. And let's see why we bought that. All right, I didn't record that one. That's my mistake, okay? 
I have lots of other ones. I just didn't do that one, unfortunately. All right, let's take a look at the chart. I can see why we bought this one. This was a uh, this was an uh, a consolidation trade, upward consolidation breakout, and we're still under the breakout level. We're under the fifty day moving average. We could perhaps move it up a little bit under the twenty day moving average and under this little pullback low in here. Okay, let's do that. All right, so we're going to replace the other one and put in this new one at 34.87. And I forgot to read that back, but that's what we did. Remember, we won't get the uh, 34.87 necessarily. Uh, it becomes a, a market order. Okay. Um, so now I don't know. Maybe James knows this. I don't know. If you do not have the scripts for those columns in there, if you if I just gave you the workspace, if I shared the workspace, I don't think those columns would work. Um, so what I'm going to do again, I'm going to give you all these scripts for your columns. And once again, just to go over that, uh, if we go to. Again, go to my playlist. Pick any one, go in here to the notes. So these are some of the old screens we've done. I'm gonna put the columns, okay, right in here and then you can copy them. And then again, you're gonna give them a name with COL or something first, okay? So uh, you can find them easily. All right, with that, I am about done. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Hopefully, you know, Strategy Center might be something that could be of interest to you. Remember, you can change. We did it on the um, the NASDAQ 100, but, you know, you could do it on the uh, S&P 100 if you wanted, you know. Now, if you do it on something like the Russell 2000, that's an awful lot. It may or may not uh, calculate all that. But now we have different. Now we have different ones, right? We can search here and um, S and P one hundred and look for all these different conditions. So you can just change your watch list right there. Again, thank you all. Have a nice weekend. I want to thank James in the chat and take care, everybody. Bye bye.